So today I'm standing here nearly alone on this huge car deck on the Talos Ferry. Normally there would be 80 cars around me, but today the, ship, the boat is actually on the shipyard, not to get a repair, but to get something as unusual as a software update. Delivered from the shipyard in 2019, she ranks amongst the newest and largest plug-in hybrid vessels of its kind. When and if needed, the vessel can charge its batteries by the use of four Volvo Penta D16 gensets. I think Volvo Penta has two roles to play with marine gensets. One is to continue to supply the vessel auxiliary systems with electric and mechanical power. The other one brings us back to where we started, where the true gensets can bring power into the water. The story about Volvo Penta. I'm very proud of the fact that in 20 years we have produced so many diesel gensets that when we add up the running hours together, we come to a number more than 20,000 running years, not hours, years, right? I'm also proud of the fact that some of those 20,000 running years are actually produced by Indians running themselves more than 100,000 hours alone. That is a good number. What I would like to think that we are really doing is that we are actually making a path for a hybrids for EMOP, right? Uh, gensets are part of an electrical system uh, that is ultimately powering the vessel. Everybody wants that uh, the power should, as it does in this vessel, quite often comes directly from batteries. Uh, but there are limitations, there are even uh, legislation that requires sometimes that to be a range extender or battery charge on board. But first and foremost, this is like step one or step one and two of hybrid in vessels. Even this is a first step in what we can achieve by today's technologies. By further uh, optimizing the engine and the generator together, we can make even further gains. And the real interesting gain is when we are doing what Volvo does best, put the energy not only on board the vessel, but out in the water. When we're using these machines, combine them with one of the most effective propulsors on the planet right now and put them together, then we have a real ecological friendly propulsion system. I think maybe the real interesting aspect of this variable speed genset is when you put them in context of also being a propulsion engine. And when you take the effectiveness of these engines, the fuel consumption, the effective fuel consumption of these engines, and put it in relation to an effective mover propulsor in the water. That is when things start to add up in, from an ecological footprint perspective.